At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we are welcoming Mana DeBolka, and she is a medium and a a guide, but also has this tremendous, beautiful, deep uh, background in nonprofit and even has started and founded her own nonprofit gift initiative, um, Global Gift Gift Initiative. And so I want to just, you know, this is this is great because I love when somebody can can kind of tether between both worlds and you know you have I I was reading over your resume and you you bounce into finance and and nonprofit and then mediumship and mediumship classes and I'm like yes it's like straddling both hemispheres you know it's like the it's like the practical and the physical and the the mystical so I'm really excited for this podcast today thank you thank you and I you know I don't really see a um a separation there you know I don't, yeah. I don't think that we live in a different world and the mediumship or psychic work and meditation needs to be uh, a, a compartment in our life i think yeah. it's, it's you know you can apply it every day to everything that you're doing pretty much yeah no of course i mean and when you get into those deeper levels but it's so often you don't see you see a lot of people either in one field or the uh, another and you don't tend to see them merged and so i love that yeah Yeah. you know it's interesting because most mediums that i know kind of stumble upon it you know because so i've been a medium since i was three years old oh wow you go through um and I, i know a lot of mediums go through a phase where there's a lot of doubt, layers of doubt, uh, layers of not knowing, you know, uh, how to express what you're seeing and feeling and hearing. And then you have, uh, I come from a family of mediums. So my great grandfather, my grandfather, my older sister, they're all psychic mediums, but none of them were trained. They were just naturally gifted. And for some reason, my mom always kept me and my sister away from it um, for whatever reason. And uh, as growing up as a, you know, as a child, when you, when you say, mom, I see something, and the mom says, no, you don't, you don't. Mm-hmm. You start developing a lot of doubt about your gifts. So it, it, most mediums kind of stumble upon it or they lose their path somewhere in the middle and then come back to it. But yeah. eventually you do come back to it. Yeah. So do you have a memory since you, you said since you were three, do you have like a, a memory of when you first were able to, you know, see or connect with spirit? Absolutely. I, I mean, I have such, it's funny because I remember everything since I was one or two. I mean, I oh. have, and sometimes I'll like say that to my friends and they're like, how do you remember what happened when you won? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I just know it happened. And the, no, I mean, like, I feel like I don't remember anything from before, like, I, I, hardly anything, even as a teenager. So, I mean, like, I'm like fascinated. You remember being one, you remember being I, I, three. I, I think I remember <laughs> the most, I would say, uh, monumental things that happened. Okay. You know, not obviously not what I ate yesterday. Yeah, I of course. Not. <laughs> I, but um, my very first experience was we were. Um, in the car going somewhere and there was this man who was on a bike a bicycle and he passed by the car and he was really speeding so my dad said it was in the mountains you know wasn't in the evening and my dad said that he's really speeding and he shouldn't be speeding and he's not wearing a helmet and i hope that he he's safe a few minutes later a car passes by and that person was in an accident and oh, wow. i was about three and i remember like just peeking out of the window and suddenly I sat talking to this guy and I, I was like, mom, mom, like I see someone by the window. <laughs> and my mom was like, what are you talking about? So I was communicating with this person who had just died and he was trying, he was asking me to reach out to his family to let them know that he's okay. Uh, obviously as a three or four year old, you, you don't know what to do with it, right? Yeah. Uh, but a few days later, we found out that it was his wedding and he was out uh, distributing his invitation cards. Oh. So he wanted me to reach out to his fiance, his, 
you know, to be wise, to let him know that even though he was in an accident, he's, he's okay. Wow. Yeah, that was, that's my very first experience um, of knowing that I could communicate with someone who had passed away. Wow. And did your, did your parents help assist you in, in delivering no. that message? Because no. you said that they were like, kind of, you know. No, no, not at all. Um, my mom would just really try her very best to keep me and my sister away. Yeah. Uh, my sister never got to a point where she could develop it further or train. Um, thankfully, I was able to do that. So when did you pull yourself back to it or what happened, you know? So like, let's say, like many people, it gets caged away. You're told you're crazy, right? And so you yeah. stop, you, you, you start to no longer use those filters or like close that off, right? So that you can operate and you can function. And then, you know, in my experience, talking to a lot of people that have it awakened, like an event sometimes happens, a catalyst, and then they're, they're re-broken open. Um, it was that like that for you or? Yeah. Yeah. It, it happened with my mom. Um, she, she fought cancer for about 10 years. Okay. And when she passed away in the last three months of her life, I was nursing her. So we brought her home and I was taking care of her. And she would, she started telling me about these things that she was seeing. Like, you know, oh, they're coming to bring me home, or I see this person. And everyone was thinking that she is highly medicated at that point because she was, you know, in the final stages. So, but I, I never doubted what she was telling me. And I, at that point, I couldn't see anything. So mm -hmm. whatever she was trying to point at, or because, you know, I'd stopped, I'd blocked myself from being able to see things or feel things. But she was pointing at people, like, you know, she'd be like, oh, he's right behind you. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> but um, I remember this um, chat I had with her. She said to me that every night there's this old gentleman who comes and sits right next to a bed. And I said, well, why don't you ask him what he wants? And she said, mm -hmm. okay, I'll do that. A few weeks later, I asked her, I said, did you speak with him? And she said, oh, I did. And he said that he's someone in the family who has passed away and he said that he's here to help me transition when it's time hmm. and then she never mentioned it again and she was so sane about it I mean, I she was very clear and it's not like she wanted to gossip or chat about it she just mentioned it and then let it go so yeah I think that was um that was when I was like I need to get back into this because um I remember myself sitting outside and trying to just hear things or see things and I couldn't at that point and this is about 10 12 years ago okay and I, I felt like I lost it I felt like oh you know maybe I can't do it anymore yeah but then I got into training and anyone can train um you know ourselves to become mediums so wow but you know of course anybody can train themselves to do a lot of different things but there's always a varying degree of ability right you know we all can learn how to cook but some people can become you know the top chef right <laughs> um and so then you know so 10 12 years ago you you had this experience um in an, in this reawakening of it through your mom and through her experience and you know you also shared with me that you have a whole lineage of this. This is, this is in your family. So what about growing up? When did you discover, was it not until 10 or 12 years ago that your family had these gifts or did you know about it? I well, knew you, about it. You I knew, knew about, about it. it. Yeah, I remember, you know, my sister is about seven years older than me. So okay. I remember both of us having experiences at the same time and we would chat about it we would tell each other and then she would share things like oh did you know about that grandfather of ours he used to do this so i think i was more in touch with my ancestral lineage you know my okay. ancestral roots and what people were about um than most people are but i never really took it seriously until my mom passed away hmm. And then, you, and then you seeked out like some training and stuff like that. I mean, where do you even go for mediumship training? I mean, now you do it, you know, yeah. and you do it, you do it all over the U.S. and, and internationally, and you hold these uh, workshops and trainings. But where did you seek and find something? Was it, you know? Well, I. So the way I started was I came back after my mom passed away, um, and I received a coupon in my email. 
and okay. it was for a mediumship reading with another medium. Okay. And I, I thought, oh, that's interesting. I've never done that. So let me go try this out. So me, like, even though I was a medium and I knew I was a medium, I still had a lot of doubt mm -hmm. and I didn't want to believe it. So I, I want, I didn't understand the science behind mediumship. So I was like, okay, I'll just go try this out, you know? Um, so I go to see this medium and I had this image in my mind of this woman, you know, how like Hollywood movies would portray medium. Yeah. So I show up and this is a probably like a 21 year old with a, a dog in her like bag and very sweet woman. And she, um, she was so accurate. Like she, I could not deny it at that point. She was so good. She helped me connect with my mom. She brought all the messages and she, wow. the only thing that she, this person knew about me was my first name. And I was like, this is insane. And I had a friend with me at the session. So even though she was so accurate, I still had so much doubt yeah. that I wanted to kind of like throw her, like, you know, catch her off guard. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, can you like see if someone shows up for him? Like totally unprofessional, but I was just trying to test her. And so, and she brought his dad back. Like she was like, oh, I, yeah, I see his dad. And I think he has passed away of a stroke and a heart. And she was so good, so good. Wow. And I'm like, this is insane. Like, I cannot believe that I have this and I don't know how to do it. Yeah, that's amazing. It, I mean, it's, it, you know, having had a, spiritual centers for 12 years and through all the different people and stuff like people come in they're always shocked right and what what type of information like comes through and but i mean when you have things like that that are so undeniable and then it's like she took a guess you know like how would she know that your friend's dad had passed away right yeah. you know like but because it wasn't a guess it was something you know but i mean you can't you know she wasn't preparing she didn't know who you were gonna bring she didn't you know like yeah. you know yeah. and so when you, you when you have those type of experiences, you re realize that it's really undeniable. Yeah. And then, you know, the, so I am, um, I studied human rights law uh -huh. and I always had this, I guess, natural curiosity about things to ask questions. And I just wanted to know how someone could be a medium and how you can actually do it. Like, I wanted to know if it's really like, is there some science behind it? Are they like, what can we do to like do it? And uh, so I started meditating. I've never meditated before that. This like oh, wow. never ever. So I started meditating and did some amount of intuitive healing classes uh, in the psychic realm. So people confuse psychic medium. Psychics are people who deal with human energy. So mm -hmm. they see tarot cards. Those kind of modalities are where you are reading another living person's energy field. Mm -hmm. So that is psychic work. So I started getting into psychic work and I still felt like it wasn't enough for me. Mm -hmm. So like I knew something more than that. You know, I yeah. wanted to do something more. And I remember in one of my last classes um, of intuitive healing, she said that, okay, let's try mediumship today and let's see who can connect. And she put us in pairs and this person that was my pair partner uh, was this Australian guy never met him before mm -hmm. and we start talking and i gave him a reading uh he had a 12 year old daughter who had passed away i had no idea and she wow. came through and he just sat there like he was staring at me he wouldn't give me any kind of validation he wouldn't say yes he wouldn't say no and i'm like i don't know if this is like real <laughs> you know yeah. so i'm i'm giving him all this information and he's not really telling me <laughs> like i'm yeah. crazy at this point and, well, especially um, that's, that's a lot to give somebody, too. Like, yeah, I see a 12-year-old yeah. girl that passed away that was your daughter. Like, I mean, yeah, so you know, was like... Numb. He was numb because he couldn't believe it either. And after the reading was done, I said, does any of that make sense to you? And he said, it did, but let me just share with the class. And then he told everyone that he had a 12-year-old who had passed away, and she was, um, you know, she couldn't walk her entire life. So she was on the wheelchair which is, I saw her dancing. So the reason she was dancing because she was telling him that, look, I can dance now, I can walk around. Aww. And she sent plenty of messages for him and his wife, and he just couldn't believe it. And at that point, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I just have to do this. I cannot wow. deny this anymore. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I love that because I mean, it was something that was, 
innate, suppressed, and then reawakened, and then even even the course of events that led you to it again, right? You know, because you didn't know like, oh, it's going to be mediumship. It's like you were seeking the intuition, the psychic work, the meditation, that, and then that led you. And on the very last day, you yeah. know, having having that yeah. like kind of brought out. And oh. that is the journey of most mediums because it, you know, I train hundreds of people now and each one of them is naturally gifted. They are. A lot of people are naturally gifted. They just don't know how to receive the messages, how to keep the connection. And people mistake mediumship to be just about speaking with the dead people, right? Yeah. And it's not about that. It's about your state of mind. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about playing with vibrations and understanding that the people who have passed away, it doesn't matter what kind of life they live. Once they drop the body, their vibration goes up because mm. they don't have matter. They don't have mass like we do. So yeah. Their vibration is much higher than ours. So in order to connect with the vibration, which is much higher than your own, you have to have a really good state of mind. You cannot be depressed or sad or you can't have uh, emotional distress or turbulence in your life. So in the process of trying to connect with someone who has passed away, the very first step to it is making sure that you are in a good place in your life. Wow. So if anything, you actually end up becoming a better person, a more conscious person, and you kind of get rid of all the emotional drama in your life. So wow, it does at the beautiful. end. It does, yeah, and at the end, it doesn't matter whether you can speak with someone or not. I mean, I can almost guarantee you that once you clear your mind, you can communicate with anyone, living or dead, in the best possible way. Yeah, well, and you and you start fine tuning all of your senses right you know in those subtle areas it's like uh i always i often say the analogy of like wine to people it's like you know like if somebody just starts drinking wine it's red and white but if you keep on drinking red you can tell the difference between a cab and a pinot and a and a merlot where like it's like it's just your palate becomes more sensitive and you can pick up the different tannins and the different you know subtle notes and and flavors right but it's everybody can do that it's just training yourself to do yeah, that it's commitment and also i mean how many of us really use the five senses physical senses to the most right like i don't know any person who is using their five physical senses 100 percent of the time mm. we are either on a phone or we're so distracted we're not always present with mediumship you cannot be that you just cannot be absent and yeah. you have to use more than just your five senses. You're using eight clear senses. So you're mm. developing your sense of smelling, your taste, your hearing, your feeling. And it's not what's in the range of your physical senses. It's actually things which are beyond that. And I always explain this to people and I say, um, you know, if I was to take a sample of your skin and put that in the microscope, what I see is um, subatomic particles, which are highly charged. Mm -hmm. And there's lots and lots of empty space in between. Yeah. So when you are in a, an example would be ice, a cube of ice. The reason you can feel it and touch it is because those subatomic particles are bound together. They are like so tight that they can vibrate fast enough. Yeah. You apply some heat, it becomes water. And that changes form. And the subatomic particles are now spread across. Now yeah. you apply some more heat, it becomes steam. So our loved ones are in the steam form. We can't see them because the subatomic particles are way separated at that point. Ah, that's, that's a, a cool, cool analogy. analogy. Yeah, and that's the science behind it. So, uh, you know, energy cannot be destroyed. So it has to change forms. It has to go from one form to the other. And what happens when you die is you just drop this mass form and you go into non-mass. Mm. The minute you go into non-mass, now your vibration is different than someone who is in a mass form. Yeah. So how do you connect with them is through your clear senses. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button. The red one. You know the one. Just press it. Little like. All right. Enjoy the rest of this content. Wow. I mean, that's like literally the best way of explaining it, you know? 
And I think anybody can grab a hold of that because everybody's seen, you know, water, ice, and steam before in their life. And they understand that that happens or, you know, there's so much. I mean, we don't notice until the dew point becomes that, that we feel humidity. We don't feel the water in the air. The water's in the air, you know? Like yeah. LA, LA people say is super dry, but it's actually extremely has high levels of water molecules in the air. It's just you don't feel it because the, the humidity, the dew point isn't at that level, you know? Yeah. And even this, like in a ceiling fan, right? When it's paused, you can see all the blades. So yeah. when it starts going faster, the blades disappear, but it doesn't mean that they disappear. I mean, they're still there. We can't see it because the yeah. vibration's gone fast enough. Yeah. Um, and I know that, I mean, elephants communicate with each other in sounds that are beyond our hearing. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things which are beyond uh, tangible. And yeah. I think the biggest failure to me is that human beings are so used to everything being tangible. They want to touch it, feel it, eat it, sense it. Mm -hmm. And if we cannot do it, then we don't think it exists. Yeah. You know, and I think yeah, we are losing um, because our loved ones are just around us. Because we believe in the tangible, we kind of break that connection with someone who has passed away. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, we're taught that it doesn't exist or, you know, that we're crazy if we do, like yeah. how you were taught when you were three by your mom. No, 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 no. You know, like, yeah. all right. <laughs> I don't know what you see, but we got to calm that down. And that just, yeah. this just doesn't exist. Like, or, go pray, go pray. You don't see that. Go pray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so then what got you into, so you deep dove from that class you realized, wow, it was a, it was a remembering of the gift that was so inherent inside of you. And it came out in such a powerful way because for you, it was so natural. And like, you now teach other people how to dive into that and to, to assimilate and to connect to that. But in that space, then like, you have this experience and then you walk out of that room. What do you do after that? You know, like, are you like, I'm going to go and try to read as many people as possible or like, we're, we're, what, it, what happens? <laughs> yeah, so what I did was, um, no, I did not do any kind of readings after that, but... Um, no, but I mean, like, I, that, you know, I was just saying like, yeah, in a, yeah. like, yeah, like, like oh I, my like, God, I can't, I can't believe that I have this, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was, to be honest, I was a little lost after that and I didn't know where to go because I just didn't know the space enough to yeah. find the right teacher. And they say, you know, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. And I didn't have a teacher, so I had to teach myself. So what I did was I started developing my course content by communicating with the spirits. So mm -hmm. I would just sit into in meditation and I call it sitting in the power. So where all you do is you sit and you bring your focus in with and you calm down your mind and see what you can connect with. And thankfully, because I think I was naturally gifted, I was able to connect with spirits really easy, super yeah. easy. Like I, I, didn't, I didn't even have to meditate for that. And I'll, I'll share a very funny incident that happened a couple of years ago, but, um, and I started speaking with them and I, everything that I teach now is none of it is available in books because I don't believe in you know, using books to, uh, you know, train in mediumship because it's just, when you start reading mediumship, that is one of my requirements. That as you're going through the course, you don't read. Ah. Because when you read, you're trying to block your mind. You know, you will not believe and the spirit says that this is not true because you think it's true. Someone has told you. Yeah. Books are someone else's opinions or experiences or their version of things. It's mm -hmm. not ours. So I in mediumship, that. you have to develop your own version of what happens when people die, or how can I connect with the spirit? How can I stay connected? How can I make sure my state of mind is calm all the time? And so it's very practical, the training, which is what I love. Yeah. And it's developed by working with spirits. So we have a bunch of spirits, a group of spirits that we use all the time. So everything that we do in this class comes from them. Oh, wow. Yes. So, so cool. cool. And, and so, so when, when did you start um, realizing that you wanted to now help other people awaken this and teach? 
Um, so, you know, I was also, as I was going through all the, the, the crazy stuff, I was at the Red Cross, American Red Cross, for about six years um, as a CEO for Southern California. And I wasn't happy. Uh, it was, it looked really awesome on paper. Great mm -hmm. job. I was only 25. I was like, this is amazing, but it's not for me. Yeah. And I felt like I was locked up in a room doing fundraising and stuff that I wasn't really interested in. Mm -hmm. And what I figured out as I started going to the mediumship training is that the job that I was doing was not aligned with my value system. Mm -hmm. And my value system was about being in the field and communicating with people and doing this, what you're doing today, uh, experiencing and healing and empowering. And I, it took me some time to find that. But the day I did, I went and quit my job and um, I founded my nonprofit which actually allows me to do that work, be in the field and be connected with kids and families. Um, and that empowering and healing um, feature, or, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's the feature, but that the value of empowering and helping and healing, mm -hmm. that exists in everything that I do. Oh. So it kind of, even if it feels like, oh, running a nonprofit, and we are, we are in 17 countries, so we have, a really large operation, but it doesn't matter because at the core of it, it's empowering and healing. Mm -hmm. And the more you do that work, you realize how many people really need this. Yeah. How many people need to be connected with their core and their spirit. Yeah. I love that. So it was almost like as you broadened your, your connection, connection to, we'll say spirit, right? you also simultaneously and which, which goes back to what we're you were saying in the beginning that they're both so connected that you also continued to at the same time spread your wings and grew as creating your own organization and growing and growing into now being in 17 countries and you know like it was like the more like I, it, it just seems like it was so synonymous with each other right yeah yeah and it's, it's and I think it happens because you, you, medium will put you, yeah, it will put you in touch with your values. And yeah. very often people confuse your values with your belief systems, and they're not mm -hmm. the same. Your belief systems are what other people tell you, mm -hmm. or what the things that you learn, right? It's conditioning. Yeah. Your values is you, it's your core, which is why yeah. your values will, will be different from everyone else. That makes you different, that makes you unique. Your belief systems could be same as other people. Yeah. Could be, like my sister and I will have the same belief system, but our values are not the same. Yeah. So the more you get into this training, that becomes really clear to you. It becomes clear that these are my values, the top five values, and I need to stay connected with this and everything that I do, all aspects of my life, relationships, work, everything. Mm -hmm. And when you start doing that, I mean, that's where you are in touch with spirit, your own and other people's spirit. Yeah. Well, it seems like in that, in that you are, through your training, yes, you're helping people be able to communicate and connect. But the biggest thing that I'm hearing is that you're helping them connect with their self. Remove the garbage of the belief systems, the inauthenticities, the, you know, uh, programming and say this is who I truly am right and in that and them finding their own voice they're able to connect and like you shared in the beginning it was like also the that their vibration or your vibration needs to be of a certain level in order to tap into this higher vibrational frequency you know and they need to be in a great space so it's it sounds like all the way around regardless of even if somebody wants to communicate but this is this is about deeper communicating with the self and everybody yeah. could use this right yeah. and and exactly i mean you put it really uh, really awesome but what people don't understand with mediumship is it's been so misrepresented like people mm -hmm. think that mediumship is about speaking with dead and that kind of stops people from even approaching yeah. or exploring or knowing more about it mediumship is really rough. it's really rooted in science Right? It's really, it comes from understanding how the human body works and how the human mind works. Mm -hmm. And how are we able to, what happens to us after we die? I mean, 
Einstein said that the energy doesn't cannot be yeah. destroyed and the total amount of energy in the universe remains constant. So okay, so we are energy and we cannot be destroyed. So what really happened to us when we die? Yeah. And how are we not asking that question? Exactly. Right? I, I love that. And yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, mediumship training or call it life training because that's really what it is, right? Yeah. The yeah, fundamentals. Art of awareness, uh, when we do it, so I teach uh, in the Middle East, some mm -hmm. of the royal family offices and not everyone is, um, not everyone is excited about mediumship. Mm -hmm. But they're excited about art of awareness, which is the same thing as mediumship. Ah, it's just branded differently and yeah, so, something so, different. Yeah. So, so, so that you can reach more people, right? Yeah. You know, if you call a rose a, a anything else, want to be just a sweet, right? You know, Shakespearean, yeah. right? You know, but it's it is. You know, you have to figure out the way to connect, right? And the yes. way to, you know, allow people to find you. Or really, I think that the more I'm hearing is find their self. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, the more we do these kind of uh, podcasts and speaking events, people just walk away feeling like, oh my God, I have this completely different picture of mediumship. Like, I had no idea what, like, my idea of mediumship was the movie Ghost. <laughs> yeah, no, because people think about it. They think about yeah. like a seance and like, you know, it's kind of creepy and dark and candles are lit and they're like, okay. And then, you yeah. know, something yeah. happens and then sometimes it's poltergeist, like, you know, kind of thing, yeah. but it's not, you know, and, the, and especially the way that you're explaining it, it's like you're, you're helping people activate eight different senses, right? Yes. Be more aware of their surroundings, raise their, raise their energetic vibration, connect with, you know, higher realms, you know, and all of that is, I mean, yeah. it's, pri it's priceless, I mean, truly absolutely. it is. And, and mediumship is probably the safest um, modality of connecting with spirits out there because when you do psychic work, you still are connecting with other human beings mm -hmm. and human beings will leave their energy in your space. Yeah. Which is why there's clearing, right? After you give a psychic reading or you do tarot cards and Reiki, everyone has their own process of cleaning space, cleaning yeah. your space. In mediumship, you have none of that. And the reason for that is because you're connecting a, with a very high vibration. Yeah. So the minute you breach the link, once you disconnect from it, it cannot stay in your space because yeah. your vibration isn't the same as that. You see? Mm -hmm. It's gone. Yeah. So... But human beings, even if, you know, your vibration isn't the same as mine, you're still in the same range. So it's yeah. quite possible that after we are done today, some of my energy is going to stick into your space and yours and mine. Absolutely. So with mediumship, that does not happen. Um, people have this idea of, you know, connecting with ghosts or connecting with these like evil, dark spirits. None of that happens in mediumship because it's just not mediumship. Yeah. I mean, that might, with, that might be something else, but that's not what, you know. Yes, yes, that is definitely, that's something in between. You know, that could be somewhere in between psychic and mediumship where there's, you know, there are souls which don't transition. There are souls yeah. that get lost. And if you, and which is why mediumship training is so much more important. It's like, if you're naturally gifted, don't start into a mediumship circle. Don't go into a CM because you, you don't have your boundaries yet. You don't know how to keep things up. So you need to train yourself to understand that you don't want to connect with something that's in between the psychic space and the mediumship space. Yeah. You want to always work with the high vibration uh, yeah. spirit. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that I, that's, I, I thank you for sharing the difference of that because I think that that's a very confusing aspect for many people is like, well, then what are these people tapping into? And why is it like, oh, you know, because there, there is a lot of people that walk around and say that they're mediums and they're like, oh, I help souls transition. Well, then are you really doing true mediumship or are you connecting to, you know, this other vibration, like you would say, you know? Yeah. yeah. And you could help people who are lost. Transition. Yeah. Um, that is... Uh, you also have dead doulas where you actually help someone who's dying to transition in the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, because we are so focused on sudden death. You know, we are focused on accidents and all kinds of deaths where people just like leave abruptly. However, there are more natural deaths than sudden deaths. 
There are more people who are dying a natural process. They're in the hospitals, old age. It's yeah. important to train them to understand what's going on. And the reason for that is the vibration that you have when you're just dying in the moment of death, the final vibration that you have, that becomes your baseline vibration for your new life. Hmm. So you might wonder that, okay, there's some babies who are born in Afghanistan. Some babies who are born here in the U.S. There's some babies who are born in the royalty. Like, what, like what's going on here? Like, why yeah. would a soul pick certain things? Well, a lot of that comes from the vibration of death, whatever they felt in the mm. moment of death, whether it was fear, confusion, whether it was peace. So it's important that people who are dying a natural process be helped to transition in the right way so that they can create another life in the best possible way. Yeah. It's almost like giving them like that shepherding to the next mm -hmm. level. Yeah. yeah. I love it. So. <laughs> You know, I know that you're going to be teaching some classes with us here, and we're so excited to have you. And you also teach, at, well, I mean, everywhere in the world, like if people are learning. Uh, uh, but where can people find you for more information on classes, whether they're through Liberate or whether they're, you know, at the Den or some of the other places that you teach around Los Angeles? Yeah, so I have a really active Instagram account. Okay. Uh, it's my first name and my last name. Okay. Um, one other we'll, we'll put yeah. it down here but yes, please it's difficult to spell my last name but um instagram would be the best way to reach me it's really active i keep posting all upcoming events on it okay uh, but if, if people are with liberate obviously on your website they can find the workshops that you're doing we haven't scheduled the mediumship certification yet with liberate but i know that it's in in the pipeline Yes. So when, at some point, you will offer the certification, which is a 14-week program. So you go That's through beautiful. 14 weeks of training, and that will be offered to you guys on your website. Um, but until then, if anyone has questions about mediumship, they want to chat about it, they can always reach out to me on my Instagram. Um, okay. And you can also put my email in there. So I'm really open to... I want to talk more about this to people, you know? So the more people yeah. reach out to me, it helps me explain to them that you're not crazy. There, there's yeah. a big community out there to support you because what you see or feel is just your clear senses helping yeah. you be beyond the physical senses. Oh, I love it. I love it. I yeah. love it. And we're so yeah. blessed to, to have uh, connected together and that I'm really looking forward to offering our community um, the ability to meet and connect with you when to grow. Yeah, we. I think we're doing another workshop with you in March. Yes, I believe. Um, the last one we did, we called "How to Stop Negative Thoughts," mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of a training into mediumship because that's the first step. Is you have to. You cannot be negative if you want to connect with spirits who are like ultra positive. You know, yeah. you cannot connect with them. So we did a really cool workshop. I think uh, two months ago with Liberate. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing another one in March, uh, but if they go on my Instagram, they'll see all the workshops that constantly being shared. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Thank you so much. If you wanted to leave anybody with anything, what would it be? Well, I would definitely ask people to uh, explore more into mediumship and not think of mediumship as something that might block them from whatever training that they're doing today, whether it's tarot cards or Reiki that is only going to support their mediumship training and awareness. So I would ask them that if, they, if they're already in this, if they're doing any kind of intuitive psychic training, mediumship is the next level. Mm. So think of it as graduating into the next level. Yeah. If you've never meditated in your life and you want to try something, you can start with mediumship because it's the, the first five weeks of it is really working on yourself and Beautiful. making sure that you are in a good place. So it doesn't matter what level of training you have, medium yeah. work for everyone. Yeah, it meets you where you're at and then yeah. takes you to the next level. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much for today. I really enjoyed Thank our conversation. You. Thanks and for having me. Of course. And for everybody that is listening, you know, algorithms are real. So like, comment, subscribe. I mean, you can literally just put like a thumbs up in the comment section. Anything will do. It just helps us generate more traffic so more people can have this amazing content. Thank you so much. Until next time.
Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, Also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, U-R-S-E-L-F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.